on the platform. Well, I just played your highlights of that game, Ollie. Welcome to the show. It looked like you had a bit of a scare. Did it feel like that? Um, I wouldn't say they gave us a real scare. They threw they threw everything at us, including the kitchen sink kind of thing. Um, they were real physical, which we expected. Um, it was going to be a tough battle all round, and we always knew it was going to be like that. So uh, I think they did real well. It was a real tough game to win, and they really grounded us, grounded us out to the end. But um, now nah, it was a good game all in all. Uh, we were, I think, we were lucky to get the win at some points, but I think we also did earn it. And um, Hopefully this week uh, it will be just as physical. We're all looking forward to that kind of big battle up front, so it's going to be interesting. Ollie, how does the team maintain such consistency? Uh, you know, when you look at the round robin, Wellington only lost two games, but you guys only lost one game um, to Taranaki, but you just seem to play at a level where you establish that real consistency and been able to win, uh, you know, by playing that same style of football. Look, what I'm trying to get at clumsily, is there any secret recipe to it? Um, uh, I guess I don't think so um, I guess one thing that we do in our team is we just all trust each other and we trust everybody to know their roles and I guess we don't try to play some fancy um, plays and stuff we try to keep it simple Keep we just want to play rugby and um, the fact that everyone trusts the, uh, the boy inside and outside of us uh, really does help and I feel like that could be I wouldn't say uh, the recipe or um, could be the secret as such. So I think that's the big one. You know, with Canterbury and with the Crusaders, the record of success in that is, a, you know, when you look at your coaches, do they do they give you this mentality of just keeping things simple, destructure things, sort of take it back that there's only one or two instructions and things, not clutter you up? I definitely think so, yeah. I definitely think that's a big thing from them. Um, but in a way, it's like... It's, it's keep it simple, but there are some things that we need to do. And if you want to keep it simple, simple, you got to make sure you're perfect. So there's a, definitely a drive for perfection and making sure we're on top of all of our games. So it's not just keep it simple and hope for the best. We're definitely working really hard in order to make sure that everything we do is a hundred percent. But I definitely think it is a mindset passed down. How much do you demand of everyone else that you play with and, and how much do they demand of you in terms of being excellent, you know, and, and, and having the right attitude, mentality, coming to play, all of those things? I think the one thing that you can ask for your brother inside and yourself is as long as you give it your best shot and you can look each other in the eye after the game, no matter the result, and say that you give it your best, that's all you can ask for. And I think that's something that as a team we've asked everybody of each other for that for ourselves for our coaches and every player we've asked the same thing so um, as long as you can give it your best and you can look each other in the eye after and say it that's all we can do Forgive me for being so to take it so long to say this but congratulations on the All Blacks 15 I've been absolutely just waiting for your name wanting your name to be called I thought that was fantastic what a great honour and what a great um, opportunity for you Oh thank you very much it's definitely um, it's definitely a really cool thing to be part of and um really cool um, what's got experience to you know go on and represent the country that I live in and um, I do love and the country that I love as well so it's definitely um, something I'm really excited for um, trying to park it for a little bit of course because we have a job to do uh, with Canterbury first but it's definitely exciting and thank you very much yeah, you know, harking back, I mean, it's such a long season, isn't it? I was just thinking that, you know, you had such a barnstorming game in the final. You all did against the Blues. It just seems such a long time ago now. Does it feel like a long time ago? Yeah, it does. It definitely goes a lot longer than you think it does. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that is. Um, what's it called? I guess there's so much rugby to do and there's def- they're definitely the different teams kind of make it seem a little bit longer throughout the season with uh, switching from Super Rugby to NPC. But um, it does feel like it was a long time ago now, that's for sure. Is it a real cultural shift in the way that, you know, you're prepared, your coaches perform, all of that? Or is, or is there a real consistency between playing for the Crusaders and playing for Canterbury? I don't really know how to ask this question. I hope you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, th- I think I know where you're getting at. Um, I think there is a, definitely a lot of consistency with it as it's pretty much all through the same deadline. Um, but... There are differences, of course. We have different coaches. There are players from different parts of the country. Like we have Billy Harmon and Daniel Linney Brown come from the Highlanders. Romano's come down from the Blues with Sam Dari and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Ramaka Pohipi come down from the Chiefs. So we get a few people from different uh, teams, which do help the influence of the team. 
But um, I think the base mindset of just, you know, working hard and always striving for that perfection is definitely something that's come through Crusaders and Canterbury. And I think it's here for for a long more, a lot more, uh, a longer time as well. So it's definitely something I think will be handed out from the next teams and, uh, in the future, but it's definitely something that runs in between both teams. Oli Jaeger is with us, Crusaders Canterbury prop and soon to be on tour with the All Blacks 15 as well. Tell us a little bit about yourself, mate. How did you get, how did you land in Christchurch and how did you get to play for Canterbury and the Crusaders? Um, oh, Jesus, nearly, nearly 10 years ago now that I first came to Christchurch. I was 17 just finished school didn't really have an idea what I wanted to do and there's a we international high performance unit that you could uh, sign up to do with the Canterbury rugby and so I thought I'd do that for a couple of months uh, you know come over here make a few new friends drink a few beers and just enjoy a bit of life and a bit of footy in a different part of the world and one thing led to another I got asked to come back and have a trial for the academy because I wasn't linked to any team back at home. And, um, you know, just stepped up from there, made Academy, made NPC, and then eventually made Super. And so it's just all kind of taken a few years to get it, but it's definitely, it's been worthwhile. I've been enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, I've definitely set up a nice life for myself here in New Zealand. It's definitely going to be somewhere where I feel like I'm going to, if one day I do leave, I'll always come back to as I feel like this is home now. Can I ask something personal? Have you found a girl? Have you got a family? What is What, what about all that? Oh, I've got a fiancé. So Fantastic. Uh, planning to get married at the end. Yeah, planning to get married at the end of the year. We Kiwi girl. So, yeah, I've really ingrained my roots deep into New Zealand now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you were, look, you were born in London, but that's a kind of an Irish accent, isn't it? Yeah, I grew up in Ireland. So, my parents met in London and were there when I was born. And I uh, lived in London for about a year before I moved to Ireland to be closer to my mum's uh, family as my dad's Dutch. So uh, we, I grew up in Ireland. I lived in Ireland for 16 years or even nearly 17 years. And so that's where the accent comes from. Yep. Um, I've got a heap of family in Ireland still. So it's going to be, especially with this All Blacks 15 tour, it's going to be a cool tour to be going on to have an opportunity to play against this Irish Yes, team. yes, yes. And uh, and when you ring home, do they say to you that you've got a Kiwi twang? Yeah, I, that's the funny thing. No matter where I go, I always have, get the piss taken out of me. <laughs> uh, if, I go home, I go, if I go home, I sound like a Kiwi. If I stay here, I sound Irish. So yeah. there's no win. It's, it's, it's a lose-lose situation for me. And at 17 years old, how did you know about New Zealand? Did you meet somebody from New Zealand? I mean, how did you find out about us? Oh, I was just always really, I always loved playing rugby. So, of course, when you're young, you see the All Blacks and you're like, oh, I wish I could just play in New Zealand. And so I just had a crack. I uh, had an opportunity to go over and I took it. And I definitely didn't expect to stay for 10 years. Um, it's definitely something that's kind of happened, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I think I made the best decision I could over that age and I'm really happy I did. Well, look, I've got to tell you, mate, and I'm not fawning over you, but you're a real fan favourite. We love the way you play your rugby. You play your code real hard. You look as though you're so uncompromising, but you look like you're a guy that sits down afterwards and can have a beer with the opposition. Is that who you are? Yeah, oh, I love it. I know, it's, you know, I've played super, uh, super and NPC now for six plus years, so I guess after so much time, you kind of do get to know the other players and the other teams, so it's quite funny in the bottom of a rock, you might see a real good friend and have a wee <laughs> <laughs> and see how see how the family's doing and stuff, but um, it's definitely after the game, after you hit each other a few times, it's lovely to sit down and have a beer with them and just catch up, which is always nice. And you know, just your thoughts on you know, with the background that you've had and everything, um, the way that the All Blacks have gone this year. I mean, and, and you, you're obviously very well aware. I mean, here in New Zealand, we are so unforgiving. I don't know whether that's like the same back in Ireland with your footy teams and your and your and your round ball football teams and your Gaelic football teams and all of that kind of stuff, but we can be really harsh critics here, can't we? Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think that just comes with the nature, you know. Everyone expects the, the All Blacks to win, expects the best out of them. So when things don't quite go the same way, people fire up. And um, I don't know if it's a good thing. I think it's definitely something, as a culture, Kiwis can work on and make sure that, you know, we're not caring into everybody just because something didn't go quite the right way. And um, I know 
as a player or as a sportsman, especially when you see articles or things like that, uh, when they write about you, it can be quite hurtful. And uh, it's definitely something that can hit hard sometimes, to, especially younger players. So I definitely think it's something that some people can be a lot nicer with their words and make sure that, you know, you, you can be heard and you can definitely have an opinion, but definitely don't need to rip into it. Your old man was a, he represented um, the Netherlands in water polo. Did you ever play? Yeah, he did, he did, he did. He was a goalkeeper. So that was um, a few years ago now. So sport runs in the family, that's for sure. Um, but um, what's it called? Yeah, he's a, he's a tall bloke, that fella. So I've got a lot to hope for him, especially how I, especially how I turned out. So. Well, look, great talking to you and all the very best for the weekend. Two semifinals on Auckland Wellington. Who do you think will win the other one? Um, I think that's going to be a very tough game. Um, honestly, I think it's a 50-50 chance for that. Uh, it's a really, you know, both teams are really, you know, got spark to them. Um, it'll be an interesting watch, but honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell you because it's every game is just so tight nowadays. So it's just, you never know who's going to come on top. Well, as I said, I was really looking forward to chatting to you. You, you, you come across as the person that I hoped you'd come across like. And uh, all the best for not only this weekend, but again, congratulations on making that All Blacks 15. Going to be fantastic seeing you in that jersey. Well, perfect. Thank you very much. It was awesome talking to you too.